balanço é muito positivo e gratificante. Produzimos-lo em, em circunstâncias naturalmente muito desafiantes. Um evento híbrido não só uh, resultou, uh, como passará a ser o novo normal, pelo menos nos, nos Green Fest. É uma forma de mais uma vez valorizar temas que hoje estão na primeira linha das prioridades até do ponto de vista internacional, como o caso do Green Deal a nível europeu e é seguramente também uma forma de estimular entidades como a Câmara de Braga a continuarem a trilhar o caminho que tem desenvolvido nesta matéria. O Green Fest é uma iniciativa que tende a trazer para a sociedade aquilo que é uma preocupação grande de uma economia e de um mundo mais sustentável. Estou ensinando aqui yoga e meditação. Yoga não é um exercício, mas um estilo de vida. Todos nós estamos ligados mais. Portanto, hoje fiz a aula de yoga tibetano, fiz agora um workshop de ervas e ontem assisti a algumas palestras online na plataforma híbrida deste ano do festival. É um, um encontro de, de inovação de novas experiências de muita gente, todos ligados ao ambiente, mas que no fundo acabam por se ligar todos com o fio condutor que é a sustentabilidade. A Zura é um projeto de impacto social que envolve ONGs e associações e municípios na recolha de lixo em praias. Ao mesmo tempo também fazemos um programa de sensibilização em escolas e com o plástico que recolhemos fazemos sapatilhas e sandálias. Tudo produzido localmente, que basicamente é um projeto então, de impacto social com uma forte componente de sustentabilidade. Conhecemos uh, outras pessoas que têm um bocado mesmo, a mesma mentalidade que nós, uh, economia circular, parcerias, locais, todos conseguimos fazer um pouco mais para, para tornar a nossa indústria, mesmo que seja pequena, mais, um, um pouco mais sustentável. É uma festa para os sentidos, é uma partilha de conhecimento, é uma partilha de boas práticas, é uma fonte de inspiração uh, para individualmente em comunidade construirmos, digamos, um, um futuro uh, melhor. It seems somewhere in the transition we've lost our moderator as that due to connection issues. Yeah. There you go. Hello. Hi. <laughs> We are live. Good afternoon from Lisbon, Portugal. Um, hello, Green Fest. It's a pleasure being here. Uh, we have a wonderful panel this afternoon um, to discuss sustainability, of course, uh, but most, most of all, uh, impact and impact measurement and how to connect all these dots uh, together um, and discuss a bit what um, this means um, for corporates, for social entrepreneurs and um, for, for everyone uh, listening to us. It would be very useful to know who you are uh, if you work in this area, if you are investors, um, if you um, are um, leading companies, uh, how much do you know about this area and uh, what are the sort of things that you would like to know. We have with us um, a wonderful panel. We have um, um, Unmesh from uh, SOPAC, we have um, sales from Abalobi, and we have 
Nora from UNO Social Business. Um, I would like them to um, speak a bit about themselves, introduce um, also uh, what they've been doing in connection to this topic, and then we would go straight into um, the discussion. And at the very end, we would like also to have um, some time um, to uh, listen to your questions and to your um, you know, doubts about how we can actually um, put this together and measure uh, sustainability within um, the framework of uh, leading a business and making um, investments um, work um, for sustainability. Um, so um, up to you, Onmesh, to um, introduce yourself um, um, to the audience. Thank you, Elsa. Uh, again, my name is Onmesh. Uh, uh, we are a San Francisco-based social enterprise. Um, I'm uh, somebody who from corporate technology world turned into the social entrepreneurship. I'm here today to represent um, the really connection between the corporates and social enterprise world. And everyone from the businesses to impact investors to social enterprise or uh, social purpose organization, they are struggling now, <clears throat> after, especially after COVID-19 and a lot of racial inequality, how to understand what is the sustainability and what is the impact and what is the difference. And my hope is to at least uh, clarify some of the confusions and hopefully bring, bring the breach between that. And thank you so much. Uh, <coughs> sorry, maybe next. Hello thank everyone. Um, Hello everyone. Gr greetings from Cape Town, South Africa. I, I wish I was in Portugal right now, actually. <laughs> I watched a video before the start of this uh, conference and it looked really interesting and appealing. Anyway, my name is Serge. I'm, I'm, an, I'm an accidental entrepreneur. I'm a marine biologist. Um, at least <laughs> in a previous life, I was a marine biologist. I'm a fishery scientist and, and I work in, in this space. You know, How do we think about fisheries um, from a sustainability point of view? How, how do we work towards sustainability? Anyway, I run a non-profit organization in South Africa called Abalobi. Abalobi means fisher in one of the 11 languages here in South Africa. And we co-design technology, basic mobile and cloud-based technologies that, um, if implemented correctly, can help fishers, um, fishermen, fisherwomen, traditional fishers, in do things differently. Differently in the way they engage around conservation, around safety at sea, and what definitely keeps us really busy uh, differently in the way they engage with the market. How do small-scale fishers um, use this technology to reconfigure, to reconfigure and to ch change their position in the market and work towards sustainability? So I'm looking forward to the conversation today. I'm looking forward to the discussion around, you know, what do we talk, how, what do we mean by sustainability when we talk about sustainability? And what, what do we mean by, by impact and impact measurement? Thank you, Serge. Nora, up to you. Hello, everyone. I am calling in from Berlin, so I think we're a quite like geographically spread crowd, and I complement the team or the panel, um, bringing in the investor perspective. Um, I work for UNO Social Business. We are a philanthropic slash like impact investing fund headquartered in Berlin, but active in uh, five geographies. That's Colombia, Brazil, um, East Africa through uh, an office in Kenya and Uganda and India as well. And we um, support social entrepreneurs such as Surge, like the likes, where you combine basically business and financial viable business models with intentional uh, positive, maybe social or environmental change. And my role um, within the organization is organizational strengthening on one hand to really improve how we support our entrepreneurs and how we help them once they are in the portfolio and then notably um, doubling down on the impact measurement and management piece. So upfront, how to integrate that element in the selection process and then equally in the management process when they're part of the portfolio. Excited to be part of the conversation. <laughs> Thank you, Nora. And I'm Elsa de Moraes Charmiento. I'm a researcher at uh, Nova School of Business and Economics, also an um, invited lecturer at ISCTE uh, in Portugal, a uh, consultant and several, uh, several other things. I've also edited a handbook, uh, the Global Handbook of uh, Impact Investing, um, which came out this year. So these are really um, very hot topics. Um, for me. Great, so um, I think we can move on to the discussion. 
And first of all, I would like to uh, unpack a bit um, all this uh, terminology about what is sustainability and how uh, how we can we can measure it. Is it actually measurable? What what kind of tools are are out there? Um, in discussions, I often see people bringing or you know confusing um, concepts, which are actually um, sometimes confusing because um, they overlap. And um, sometimes we we speak about ESG. Um, other times we speak about <laughs> other other um, other acronyms that are out there. So how can we actually address sustainability within uh, within the measurement of impact? And also why do we talk about impact and not results or just activities? Why do we connect? impact with sustainability? Is it only the long run? How can we measure the future? So there are also uh, beyond um, the acronyms and, and, and you know, the standards and the various methodologies that are out there, really the, the need to sort of frame how we can conceptualize impact measurement within sustainability and what does that mean for each um, you know, profile of, 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 of company, of SME, corporate, impact investor, social entrepreneur, and so on. Um, I don't know which, uh, um, um, who um, of you would like to go to go first, um, what comes to your mind. So I, I propose that uh, we make it, um, you know, those an interactive as a conversation so that we can, we can um, you know, we can just um, uh, go about talking, discussing these, these, these things. I wouldn't mind talking about sustainability a little bit first before we move into the impact and the impact measurement space. Um, as you heard earlier on, uh, I work in fisheries. Now, fisheries is a hot topic. Uh, I'm sure many of you will have watched the um, very contested documentary on on on, on Netflix, um, Sea Spiracy. So you can see, you know, fisheries often ha have have a bad name, and there there are many legitimate concerns around around and around fishing, and and whether or not these fisheries are sustainable. Now, I live in in Cape Town. I live in South Africa. South Africa is one of the most unequal countries in the world and um and the most one of the most divided countries in, in the world and over the last 10 15 years since i've been here um i've really had to learn the, the hard way that while while we are really keen on sustainability and we want it now and we want it tomorrow and we want to work towards it straight away um different people have very different definitions of sustainability. Different people have very different understandings of sustainability. Different people have different ways on how potentially they could get towards sustainability. Moreover, in a very unequal uh, world um, or unequal country like South Africa, um, there's potentially a danger to put sustainability in a particular interpretation of sustainability as green. Um, at, at the forefront as a non-negotiable, um, as we need sustainability right, right now. We work with many, many fishers who have never had a chance to even articulate their vision towards sustainability, who have, who have never had a chance to navigate towards sustainability. So in our program, we really look at the concept of sustainability um, in, in all its dimension. We, we see you know, the, the, the connection uh, or the dimension of the ecological dimension, the species, the habitat, um, as completely interwoven and interconnected with the social dimension and the economic dimension. So much so that um, if one was to only focus on the one dimension, it could have negative consequences on the other dimension. This is something we very often see. Uh, and again, in an unequal society where um, small scale fishers in, in my country here are extremely marginalized, extremely disenfranchised, disenfranchised, we almost have to look at the human dimension before we can start looking at actions, at, at opportunities, at, at fisheries rebuilding from an ecological, ecological side. So how does that dialogue happen with the fishermen? Because usually we tend to think about fish stocks, you know, uh, yes. that sustainability in fisheries, it's fish stocks. But then, as you've rightly said, it's a multidimensional concept. Yeah. And I believe that a part of your initial work is also to explain that you need to look into that throughout, um, you know, the value chain and, and throughout the way that they also concept conceive uh, their own business plan. How does that yeah. uh, happen? 
Thanks, thanks for that question, Elsa. Um, so for, for, from our side, where, where does it begin? It begins with, with us listening. Um, it begins with us, you know, trying to um, establish a genuine relationship with the, the fisher women and the fishermen we work with, with those fisher groups, and, and really listen. Um, as a marine biologist, um, uh, when I came to South Africa, um, I, I you know had this idea that I could measure things and I could um, I could identify certain things and then I could tell people what to do and how to look at it because I'd I'd been studying it and I learned you know from day one that that's not how how it works and and, and listening to people is a starting point why because we are working with small scale fishers small scale fishers who have been fishing for generations they've been fishing you know as part of their tradition as part of their culture they are out at sea every day what does that mean it means that they have a very vast rich ecological knowledge as a simple example um there's a species here in south africa called yellowtail i think in portugal it's called kingfish um yellowtail i have one scientific name for yellowtail for that particular species the fishers i work with um in one particular community have 11 different names for that species 11 different names depending on um on which habitat that species swims the size of the species and basically its life cycle um how it interacts with different species um uh, you know, how they cook it through their local cuisine. So they have a very high resolution understanding of that fishery. And so back to the listening part, for me, you know, where does it start? It's how do we tap into that? How do we understand that, respect and recognize it? But how do we tap it into that and really build or construct an image of what this fishery look, looks like? What is the health of this fishery from an ecological, social, economic way? And one that, once that dialogue or that common framework is set up, then you know we can start constructing a narrative around sustainability and how potentially we could get there. Excellent. Okay. Um, uh, you made me think about several things, but we'll keep it for later on. Um, Nora or Unmesh? Yeah. Probably, if I want to weigh in from sort of the um, investor perspective, sort of you know very removed from to contrast to search perspective just now. I think on that level, a lot of where I see the equivalent to sort of um, what do we really speak about is the current discussion about ESG and SDGs, where people tend to use them interchangeably. However, they do address very different needs. You do, yeah, like it's possible to sort of map certain ES and G um, sub criteria to SDGs, but it's not like complete, it doesn't cover all of them. And um, so I think in that space, there's a lot to do still like clarifying in that space, what is sustain sustainability? What are the SDGs and what is um, then the ESG? So sort of just a lot of clarification still needs to happen. It is coming, but I, I believe there is a lot more to do, especially from the investor perspective. As Serge, you said, you come from a, um ecologist background, but still like studies, you have numbers, you have figures, there's evidence, you can prove it. Finance is exactly the same. Investors come in, they want to see numbers and the likes and to put in, like numbers and impact, it's often quite hard. It's um, on the one hand, when you want to have like impact projections, right, to evaluate an uh, investment, there is research sometimes out there that you say, especially in the educational sector, you know, what's the upside of a certain intervention or a certain um, impact model. But then when it comes to the other side, the evidence sort of creation, really collecting information from the ground to add to the body of literature, to add to our knowledge how um, impact pathways actually work or don't work, or what are the unintentional negative aspects probably that we don't even um, have on our radar, basically, you know, the unknown that we don't know that we don't know, uh, so to say, this is exactly where listening to stakeholders come in. Uh, this is so crucial that really we connect um, the body of literature, the science, with then um, the stakeholder voices, so to say, and that's with active, um, yeah, listening to to the people, to the customers of the social business we invest in, because um, as Serge just pointed out, they know best. All right, so the, I'm glad that uh, Serge and Nora went before me. Uh, I think it really gave a good perspective of where the sustainability of real definition is, and uh, Nora describing the investor perspective. In reality, it, this whole uh, topic of sustainability and impact is quite uh, being debated now in, in the various different sectors, especially 
um, the the notion of sustainability in the corporate side or investor side is significantly different than what the uh, search describe. Uh, Nora is a little bit more of a anomaly, <laughs> but because of their fund is very uniquely positioned for the impact first. But fundamentally, um, the the when we look at look at the the spectrum in ESG um, and and especially sustainability for most corporate environmental uh, uh, carbon is really comes to their mind. Then they just forget the S part. In fact, there's hardly any discussion on S. And even if it is, it is very, very uh, disconnected uh, 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 notion of the what a social impact means essentially out of that one. And one thing that the, there is a huge need is to bridge the, the, the this definition between three different communities, often described as asset owners who typically fund the large funds and asset managers and asset, uh, which is typically enterprises like service enterprise. And uh, one thing that I learned essentially when I left uh, my technology career to, uh, to start working in a uh, tribal healthcare system is that like Serge said, uh, first thing that this work, the work was mother and child mortality. Some of these issues are so difficult to solve, especially poverty to um, mother and child mortality issues. But early on in my career, in my this learning process, new journey, I by seeing some of this work where using mobile data collection process from the healthcare in a very steady and step by step manner, these organizations were able to listen to the health workers, will listen to the poor people, and by bringing their voice in a step-by-step-by-step -by -step -by -step manner, and ultimately bringing the corporate sector by demonstrating some good evidence and partnership with the uh, public sector, essentially, there was substantial reduction throughout the state. And that particular thing made, made, made me thinking that this can be done, is uh, then, and like uh, so I'll say, it, Impact measurement is not about measurement at all. It's more about learning. And unless <clears throat> the corporate has an investors has really appetite to bring this kind of culture, it's difficult to get to the path of the sustainability. Only way to get to the path of sustainability is to continuously listening to the stakeholders. In some sense, Serge, Nora, and myself are uh, really speaking the same language, but uh, I think there's still a lot of disconnection in other uh, side of it altogether. Right, so that's a very good point. So there are challenges, several challenges um, beyond beyond the ones that you have um, that you have mentioned. Um, and it is very interesting if what you've said, um, that impact measurement is about learning uh, and about building the concept. And Nora spoke about impact pathways and in connection with what Serge was what was was saying, is that you need to build the perspective. Um, within each typology of business or sector um, to understand and to explain be, um, how, um, um, how the business happens before you actually, um, you know, create on top the, the, the mechanisms to, to actually measure. So the understanding of the impact is really key to proceed. Um, another important aspect is the unintentional aspect also, because uh, we can develop beautiful mechanisms to measure a lot of results and effects, but and impacts, uh, but there are some that escape us and, and uh, we like negative externalities, um, you know, unintended, unexpected um, results that we can have. So it's very important also to um, very, be very aware about that. So what are really the challenges that are out there in really moving um, from, you know, the concept and understanding, you know, impact, what are impact pathways, the different steps towards impact, the different steps of results, until really thinking about metrics and uh, what to measure, how to measure, uh, and eventually also under understanding why should we be measuring it. I, I can go next, I guess I can play. So, because we are more for coming from the mindset where we connect and reach the different players, obviously by means of the tech. I believe that every um, segment has to play their own role. I mean, where Nora is coming from, 
on in investment side, they need to be playing the role on really supporting the uh, the enterprises uh, uh, social, or social enterprises who are really want to grow and scale. But there are very intentional way of doing going and doing about it all together. And so, uh, oftentimes there is a whole top-down approach. Typically, and, and many of them are coming because many of the people on impact investment, the corporate, are coming from the Wall Street mindset, and they force the metrics downwards essentially, which actually causes a lot of friction rather than creating a solution altogether. Instead, if they are a collaborator with the enterprises on developing the solution by helping them understand and building a capacity, that would be the role, I would say, more from the investor's perspective. On the other hand, uh, places like where Saj is playing to social enterprises, what we just said, and uh, what Sajin has said, essentially the, you need to listen, but what does the listening mean? Listening means there are some data that's already available that oftentimes you cannot just simply say, I'm going to observe it and, oh, I'm going to do that. Yes, it is necessary. Obviously, you have asked common sense question, and that's all. you should always be asking common sense and continuous question. But if you really want to scale, you need a, a, an approach where it, it has to be a little bit of a data-driven approach where you can be listening to various different elements through systematic capturing those data sources and have a system that puts together. This is quite common in corporate world. Why can't that come into this and social enterprise world as well? And so there are a lot of interesting things that needs to happen in that segment altogether. So in some sense, there's a the bridge and divide the the, 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 the bridge we have to uh, that is divided right now. We need to create a bridge out of that one, where everyone needs to play the role. There's a lot of work to be done in in order to truly listening and really supporting the enterprise segment, because ultimately, like Sir said, it's all about um, what the people who are on the ground wants to achieve, and that is the sustainability altogether. And that definition has to be aligned between the various different key players in our ecosystem. Um, any comments? Um, I, it just, I was just thinking how, how do, um, among all of that, how, how do we pick the sustainability part? So we have an idea even when we get to that point, because there is a, a learning curve, of course, and we have an idea about what our impacts are. Um, how do we focus on sustainability? Are there tools out there? Uh, can these be standardized or in your experience, it's something that is done you know, case by case uh, where you really need to um, to adapt it um, you know, throughout time. It's, it's, it's not uh, you know, a process where, well, we go and you develop a system and it's perfect, but it's actually something that is um, that you need to experiment, uh, that you need to try out um, and improve all the time. So how do you, bring that um, uh, you know, form of sustainability and how do you frame sustainability within uh, the measurement of impact in your experience? Yeah, if I want to go, I try to, to just share my perspective working for a sector agnostic fund uh, operating in five geographies, um, which is very exciting, uh, but yeah, brings its challenges because we have a growing portfolio of nearly 50, uh, 40 companies plus and they all pursue different impact models. So even if they are in the same sectors, they all address different places in the value chain. Maybe in ag, um, then it's uh, it's in processing or they're in uh, prop finance or they're, you know, on the production side. So each of them address a different challenge and that's put into context of their local realities. So having that one size fits it all approach, unfortunately, I really tried hard. Um, I didn't find it and I've had many, many discussions and I think this is also not what it means, uh, like what the sector needs, because you do lose a lot of the nuances of impact when the more you aggregate and the more you want to simplify, uh, you lose a lot. So it's really where to find that sweet spot of sufficient rigor um, of the metrics, of the information that you collect, but still user friendly and pragmatic, because otherwise you set up a system that theoretically is impeccable, but it just doesn't work. And I think, um, I mean, a lot of thinking has gone into, um, you know, what is the NN framework and how do you define impact by the impact management project by IRIS and others, uh, which is great guidance. And I'm happy that not everybody wants to have their proprietary tools. So I think that adds to the sustainability 
of impact measurement and management because if everybody does it differently it's not very sustainable in the end and it's not scalable so i think that's a great move it's then just on the other hand to still how to make it work and how to apply it and how um not only impose it i think Umar, she said oftentimes investors come and they think you know these are the three metrics they need and then oftentimes they're not material it's just not relevant for the portfolio companies so um and then they won't use it afterwards. And this is where, again, the other part of sustainability probably comes in. Like, why would a business collect metrics that for them actually don't make sense? They only see it as a reporting requirement. They will do it as long as the funding comes and as long as the, you know, the requirements are there. And then they will stop it. So, again, that's not very sustainable as approach neither. So what we try to do is really to, we put up that um, impact objective, the theory of change slash the, the impact pathway. We sit together with the entrepreneur. We verify if, if we've understood correctly. We try to understand what metrics do they currently look at, maybe financial or operational metrics, because oftentimes they intercept or there is a link between uh, business or operational metrics, uh, maybe the number of sales, the net, you know, number of employees, depending on where what their impact model is really understand what they already do and then complement it with um, like relevant metrics that are mapped to their theory of change and come to a handful of metrics, but really sit with them and be like, what's feasible? We cannot ask for, you know, X, Y, Z if it's, the, uh, it's just out of their hands and they will then report data just for the sake of reporting and the quality of the data will suffer. And then in the end, that's not sustainable either. So it's a, it is a lengthy process, I must admit, and it does come with costs and, and, and time. But as Unmesh pointed out, that cannot be borne by the entrepreneurs themselves. It must be a, um, a collective effort um, of the investor in that perspective now, in terms of capacity building, but equally the buy-in then obviously from the social entrepreneurs to see the value of collecting and really uh, collecting the metrics and gaining business insights or impact insights them from them. Yeah, if I can pick up a little bit on this, uh, but maybe also diverge a little bit. Um, there's no, there's, there, there's no doubt that um, it, 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 it can be an overwhelming process, or it can be a daunting, a daunting process, or a daunting component to um, to to dive in as a, as an organization, where whether you're a non-profit or 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 a for-profit. But at the same time, I'd I'd also like to say that you know there is. There are many more tools out there these days. There are many more frameworks, platforms, um, resources out there that uh, that you know that that can minimize that 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 barrier or, or can can make it even more exciting to actually dive into something li li like this. Um, what I'd like to pick up on though is that um, you know we we are something in between a nonprofit and a and a for profit, and so from from a nonprofit, you know we we we've walked through things like a theory of change, um, and for those of you who don't, who don't know what a theory of change is, please have a look at it. It's a very interesting concept and a very interesting construct, um, where you know we can really map out the the indicators that um, that tell us something about what we're doing. Um, over a period of time and as we work with obviously the different stakeholders. But then from a kind of a, 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 a an investment point of view or, or an impact investment or for-profit business point of view, you know, they're very often the, 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 the metrics, you know, that you're chasing are, are, are a little bit different. They don't always connect with, with one another. And, and you were talking about challenges earlier, Elsa. We, we've definitely come across challenges where, you know, there's pressure to look at scaling up and scaling out and numbers, number of jobs, number of customers, number of products sold, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then, you know, when we bring it back to sustainability, um, sure, there's an angle of scaling up and scaling out because that's very often linked to the self-sustainability of the social enterprise and the, you know, there's the growth of the social enterprise away from the investment or into a next round or away from philanthropic funding. But, you know, back to the sustainability of the fisheries, um, it's not about scaling up and scaling out. It's about scaling deep. It's about scaling deep. And these are processes that take many years um, and need and, and go through a lot of different phases to really get all the stakeholders aligned and work towards you know, rebuilding, um, for example, a fish stock. And so, you know, that dilemma between, you know, scaling deep and doing it properly and, and creating long lasting effects to really change, you know, extremely marginalized fisheries or markets. And at the same time, you know, 
scaling up and scaling out because that's you know that's what you that's part of your ambition it's part of you know where you want to be as an organization you want to make your products your services your technology available to many fishers around the globe and your investors are also keen on this but what comes first and how do you balance that within your kind of your your mission as an organization those are that for me that's definitely one of the biggest challenges uh, we face almost every day that's quite interesting oh sorry Ines. if i can add uh, i think i i want to uh, 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 say that yes there are a lot of standards and tools uh, out there and framework that's that's great actually uh, however, one thing that is still lacking is to uh, the the ultimate purpose here is to really understand and listen to the stakeholder and scale. Now, one thing that has not been heavily talked about in the sector, you know, as, as impact as a system is well, how do you reach that thing that what Serge is talking about? And yes, it takes many years, but there are mechanisms to to uh, to fast. Based this thing. This is nothing new in the corporate sector. When we were in the software development sector, we used to call agile mechanism or iterative approach. And we, one of the approach that we often talk about is that, yes, start with theory change, but don't get too overboard, but focus on something, what we call short and frequent experiments. Listen to the stakeholder frequently and get the responses and learn it faster and understand in a multidimensional way and keep, keep iterating, keep improving it altogether. If that methodology is a, a, a really been a, a really used in a rigorously, I think there is a ways to improve the processes better and faster. Otherwise, the, there are a lot of other pressures that enterprises have, funding pressures, product market fit pressures. And uh, without this kind of a cultural change, essentially, within those enterprises, you can't really Moved fast enough, and you are always going to be relied on, unfortunately, philanthropic fund or impact fund, and there is just so limited uh, money out there altogether. And that's the shift that the entire sector needs to go through it. And unless uh, likes of you know really pushes this kind of cultural need, uh, it's difficult to really create a good relationship between the uh, funders and enterprises. So I hope that uh, a lot of people who are listening to here really gets it that ultimately it's about working together and changing the way how enterprises are really listening to the stakeholder. I think I would like to add one part to what Umesh, uh, Umesh said. You, you mentioned multidimensional and that would somewhat lose back to search concern about only the scale, you know, like how many do we reach to reach more and more and more. And oftentimes it's not about that. And we have, um, some companies in our portfolio that are about the depth of impact, right? They want to be, they want to create resilient jobs, resilient incomes. So um, for them to withstand shocks and the likes just in the, in the, in the well, ongoing still pandemic, we've seen that just some um, were set up in a more sustainable manner, more resilient manner than others. And how we in attempt to incorporate this multidimensional view is really, um, so we come up with an impact scorecard, so to say, where we have like different dimensions, where we have, sort of the reach, so how many, um, or the, the breadth of it, so how many really are we reaching, how underserved are they, that's sort of the depth, what really changes there, um, and then sort of the reach is like socioeconomic and demographic background, who are the people, like, are they, how underserved, for lack of a better term, are they, and then obviously it's not like a scientific, uh, you know, approach per se, but it's an attempt uh, to get there, to actually just take different dimensions in, put weightings to them, and you come to a scorecard or something like an approach um, to, to speak about it, not yet with um, far away from benchmarking and with other investors, but for us internally, just to understand where we are. And it, again, like it's an attempt, it's nowhere from perfect, but I think this is where the industry stands. And it's exactly what surgeon like, don't go get carried away by putting up the perfect theory of change or unmesh, you, you agreed to that, just get started. Put like, and if you want to hear to listen to stakeholder voices, just put down a couple of questions that you feel could inform your product and your service, but equally speak to who they are and what are their needs and basically what background do they come from? So it's, it's all about getting started, I guess. And we're grappling all coming from academics, we're grappling with the, you know, holding the balance between like, yeah, imperfection and so some data, but it's, yeah. It's that equilibrium, I think, that, that we're currently seeking. Can I pick up on that very briefly? Um, 
Uh, just something we've learned as well, um, and I see this happening over, over and over and all over, is that very often a, an organization will outsource their impact measurement. They will, you know, at the beginning and the end of the project, or sometimes just at the end of the project or program, they will, um, they, they will you know, engage a party that does the job and comes back with a, 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 a report. Um, I can see that in some cases, you know, there's value to that. But I have to say that when you work in the sustainability arena or, or resilience or you work in, 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 you know, with very underserved communities that very often operate in a very different world to to people who may, be, may have had, you know, been lucky to get uh, education and, and, and get jobs that it's not it's not a productive approach um really embedding your your impact your know, impact measurements you're, you're really thinking as a team around your theory of change your indicators how you're going to even collect data about these indicators is something that needs to be completely embedded not just in one department in your organization but across 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 the team um and so in, in our case we we've done that through combining theory of changes and and, and indicators with OKRs, objective key results. I'm sure many of you know what the, what these are. They're very popular in the corporate world, definitely in the startup world. And really matching, you know, OKRs with with you know what is going on in your theory of change and indicators allows every staff member, every team member, every colleague, every work stream in your organization to basically live your theory of change. Live your theory of change because your your indicators or your 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 targets are directly linked with your with your targets, with your job description. Yes, just um, a clarification for our, our audience very, um, very quickly. The theory of change is based on the contribution approach where you consider what you do, your activities, and then you have the scale of results. And you can think in various terms. You can think about the short term, the medium term, and the long term, for instance, you can after the activities, they materialize in outputs, then in outcomes, and finally, impact so you build upon your activities throughout time and then finally you reach your let, let, let's say your long-term goal and that is often the impact now the difficulty here is um, as we have um, um, mentioned at the beginning of the discussion is sometimes to even understand and frame the impact but then throughout your um, theory of change which is basically the chain of results as you go along trying to materialize um, your your goal um, is really to embed sustainability, which is kind of a cross-cutting topic. So even when you know exactly the limit to, to, to delimit your impact, then you have to select, um, you know, what are the, the sustainability dimensions you are going to look at. And it, often it is multidimensional. So it's you have to work on it over time. It will not come around easily at the first time. You have to work on it and, and, and improve it as you go along. Uh, because sometimes you can come up with, you know, say, you know, job creation, which is something that we see all the time in terms of impact. But a lot of the jobs are not sustainable. Uh, they might be informal, right? So you have to consider, for instance, a living wage. But is that sustainable? Because the company might not be operating within one year. So what does sustainability mean? So you have really to, to think about how to embed very clearly uh, um, uh, you know what you want to have uh, in the end, what you want to produce and create your activity, so that um, you really go for it. So when you say improve marginalized markets, you have some dimension of sustainability in the impact, better products. But what does that mean in terms of sustainability? Uh, then um, you have sustainability also for the investor. So there are all these dimensions, and of course there are very many. And again, you need to start by you know keeping it simple, pinning down the essential and then growing a bit more. And in the process, you will, of course, get rid of uh, some of your initial thinking, your initial tools, and you will be improving over time. So this is to say that this is not a linear process, but there are several tools, information out there for free. Um, and this is kind of a, a thinking and a mentality that anyone should have um, in, you know, working in business, being in corporate, being, in, you know, an impact investor, you know, social entrepreneur, um, that beyond having a results-oriented mentality, now we need to go beyond that into an impact results mentality, but I, I would say a sustainability results-based type of management uh, because it's it's even more demanding because we are mixing more layers of 
demands. So it becomes more complex. And on the other hand, as we are measuring, then we have to quantify. So we have to define, we have it to, to, to delimit. So there are different types of exercises here from conceptualization into quantification. And you do not get from one to another in, you know, on using a linear path, you go back and forth and back and forth in an iter iterative process until you get all these pieces together. And I think this is um, a very key message. Uh, we are um, almost at the end. I think I would leave uh, you to finalize with, with, with some comments um, uh, and your final views uh, about uh, about this topic. Uh, Serge, want to go first? Yes, absolutely. I'll have a, I'll have a short one. Um, in the beginning, you might get frustrated that it has to be an iterative process, but very quickly you realize that, that iteration is actually the fun part. <laughs> Nora and Mesh? There, there is a lot of learning there. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, uh, I would say one thing, um, the COVID-19 last year and even this year, and uh, recent issues in U US on the racial inequality and other has uh, really uh, given a time to reflect on who we are as a society. And if I may uh, really po point out the, the, the what Serge mentioned, that, that there is a whole notion of the philanthropy and impact investing, which is really coming from elitist mindset, where you hire the third party thing uh, to hire it. That needs to change. And essentially that power needs to be given back to the enterprises who are working close to the uh, stakeholders, because unless you give that power back to them uh, and lose that uh, things from a top down approach, uh, it's difficult to make changes. So um, we have a lot of things to reflect upon, and this is a great opportunity for us to start to think about that. Yeah, I think my two cents that I want to add is probably being in, almost you pointed to us, being sort of in between investors. So we come sort of, uh, we're a philanthropic investor, but we are an investor, so to say. Um, so somewhere in between that spectrum of like traditional investing and then um, charity. And it's quite, it's challenging because if you work really from international development perspective, monitoring and evaluation perspective, the rigor is just so much higher and there's dedicated budgets aside for it. And people there understand that it does come with cost and resources or the likes already see it as a different, like, you know, you just have to put it aside. It's part of what you do because otherwise you, you don't know how well you do or <laughs> whether you should, uh, you know, change anything versus uh, when, you know, from the other investor perspective, they just don't, for them, it's some excels and yes, you just put them, you do a couple of like a bit of a research, just top down like data assumptions, proxies, and that's it. And that's very different from what Unmesh described, right? Going in field and collecting data, speaking to the people. So um, I think my message is just, yeah, I wish that there was more clarity in terms of how different people, especially than investors or supporters um, define and bring like tell openly about how they go about um, supporting their companies in getting better uh, with regards to impact measurement and management but also what kind of standards do they apply to themselves i think there is much there's still a long way to go there <laughs> Thank you. Um, I think there is. Um, uh, it's about time to to finalize. I'd like to thank um, to thank you, the speakers, and thank the audience who has been uh, listening to us for the last. Uh, 45, 15 minutes, and to um, thank Greenfest for, for having us and for organizing this brilliant event. It's been a true pleasure, and I hope um, you know that you can follow also the other discussions that are um, following this one. Um, have a good day. Take good care of yourselves. Uh, it was great to have you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Um encontro, um encontro num sítio fantástico, a falar de sustentabilidade de diversas maneiras. A maneira como raciocinamos a multitasking que existe hoje em dia é completamente diferente do cérebro há 100 anos atrás. Há uma dimensão física presencial que é obviamente importante para um contacto mais direto com os projetos, com as ideias que aqui vão ser debatidas. Faz todo sentido estarmos aqui e partilharmos desta filosofia de vida comum. 
mas ao mesmo tempo há também uma dimensão digital que nos aproxima a todos e que... Tendendo à funcionalidade e potencialidade da plataforma que utilizamos. O formato digital em complementaridade com o presencial uh, potencia imenso a experiência das pessoas. O que sinto é que vamos poder fazer um upgrade. Garantir que as pessoas em casa tenham uma experiência muito próxima da realidade. Uh, é possível que as marcas ativem criem experiências e muitas das experiências com emoção. Nós estamos a fazer parte da Digital Team. A tecnologia está cá para ficar. Nós temos um ecrã gigante na sala de capítulo. As pessoas podem estar todas fora. Não estão lá fisicamente, mas estão os avatares. Portanto, é presencial. Eu só não estão lá de pessoas em pessoa. Para mim, se relaciona muito com a questão do mágico. Nós podemos ter o Green Festa agora aqui.